Hello, I'm Margaret Knoll with the League of Women Voters of Portland. We, along with Metro East Community Media, are here talking to candidates who are running in the May 2020 primary election. With me here today is Cash Carter, who is running for mayor of the city of Portland. Welcome, Cash. Hey, thank you. Please tell us a little about yourself and why you are running and what unique characteristics you have among all the candidates. Uh, well, thank you. Um, I'm uh, 39 years old, born and raised in Portland, Oregon. Uh, I have two boys. And um, partially the reason why I'm running for office is just because I have like experience with the homelessness crisis. Like, me, myself, personally, I, I've been homeless. I've stayed in shelters, family shelters. So I've seen firsthand um, the effects and also how to make it out of it. And uh, some of those things like having success are, you know, being homeless, having a job, working for the Portland Timbers, being their team chef for two years during the season, which they won the championship. And just uh, one of their models was, you know, every day was hard work, beast talent, and with talent, you know, won't work hard. And that's always been just like a, a driving thing to me, uh, you know, trying to go forward. And in this new venture, I'm in trying to become mayor of Portland. Tell us, um, the COVID-19 pandemic and the resulting devastation of small business, city employee layoffs and housing displacement will have, well, they'll be with us for some time, those consequences. How would you seek to address the fallout, including the reduction in city revenue? Well, I've seen Mayor uh, Ted Wheeler is already trying to make steps towards that by cutting his own pay and with the furloughs. My thing is, is that the tenants need actually assistance right now. And as of all the candidates right now, I'm the only one that's offering a alternative plan, which I see as in some of the large management groups should be able to come together to just have the tenants pay for the utilities included in the rent, you know, water, um, sewer, garbage, maintenance. If they are able to do that and then to just completely eliminate the rest of it, this would entitle them to not have to, uh, you know, spend money out of pocket on their end, which they're worried about. And I think that that's something that the tenants uh, could go for because we can't just ask uh, for everything to be free. Like certain things just have to be paid. And I understand where management is coming from, but I think that if we could address that, maybe because and the mayor himself cannot have a freeze because of the laws in the city government, but there are ways around that and we need to have, you know, these large management groups, you know, step up and do what's right. Are you satisfied with the current structure of Portland city government? And if not, how would you change it? That's a good question. I mean, um, I'm satisfied with whichever the citizens vote for. And it seems like every time we bring this up, everybody votes it down. So my whole thing is, is like, you know, you have to, work with pretty much what you have uh, besides of always complaining. With that being said, I think that us uh, in Portland being a city that has this uh, style of government, we could actually take this and lead by example and make it work, uh, you know, versus always trying to go towards what the other major cities are doing because even though they have this, as you can see, they still have problems. So I feel like right now Portlanders should just uh, look towards what we have and trying to make the best out of that to actually lead and be in the forefront of this and maybe even change some minds of some other cities going back towards our style of government. Okay. Um, how would you address the public's significant concerns about police community relations and the use of deadly force and officer accountability? Well, uh, that's tough. And uh, one of my things is, and I'm not saying that the police are 100% like right about, you know, and justify, but you have to place yourself in their position. And I wish it was some way that, you know, the citizens and certain people who had concerns could go through like a virtual kind of thing to see exactly what they have to go through and how fast these choices have to be made to be able to be able to better understand, you know, uh, 
what's going on. But uh, we can't do that yet. So I do understand there are concerns. I feel like um, just having certain policies in, uh, in place, such as the uh, drug test by the officers, I think that will be a big major step in regaining trust uh, from the citizens that was lost if we could just start with you know simple steps. Things aren't gonna just be fixed uh, within overnight or just be fixed with trying to add things into a contract because it starts with holding those accountable for these actions. And I would like to see like a different process of how they are being held accountable because it's all outsourced. And then, you know, the mayor can sit there and give them some discipline. It goes outsourced, they change their minds. So we kind of pretty much need to fix that and then just begin to work around that. Okay. Uh, the city's park system um, has facing, is right now facing serious financial challenges, even more so because of the closures caused by the pandemic. What ideas do you have for securing the financial stability of the park system? Um, it's always like a mystery to me because like in Portland and, and uh, our area, we have so many large businesses that make, you know, millions of dollars. They're on the uh, uh, stock exchange, Nikes, Adidas. I mean, the Simpsons are created here. So obviously we have, you know, income and revenue here. And I would like to reach out more like, I know Nike has gone through and they donate, you know, uh, basketball courts and things like that. But I would like to see more of these businesses maybe uh, sponsor uh, a park or two and, uh, you know, add more, reach out more than just um, sports because it's just more than basketball courts just won't fix the problem for the park. You know, there's the upkeep of the park, there's gang activities in the park. There's so many uh, different things that are included. So I would uh, start there and try to reach out uh, for sponsors for, um, uh, you know, local people, even um, as far as citizens to where like how they have in, uh, in Pioneer Square where you could buy a brick. I mean, like even that, like, you know, could uh, somewhat sponsor a piece of your park, have your name on it, have your area and could take more, you know, ownership of these uh, parks in their areas. Great, well, thank you very much. Um, this has been the Video Voter's Guide. Thank you for watching. The primary election is on May 19th, a Tuesday. Be sure to inform yourself about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your right to vote.